Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. It is the end of an era. A federal judge lifting the mask mandate for travelers on mass transit, leaving it up to local entities to make the call. And this morning, VIA has joined the San Antonio International Airport, not requiring passengers to mask up. Sarah Costa spoke with VIA riders about how they feel about ditching their masks. I'm tired of wearing a mask. It's just, it's just been too long. Daily VIA bus rider Michael I mean, LeBlanc I, I, says he feels relieved. He no longer has to worry about wearing a mask on his daily commute. <laughs> VIA announced this morning that masks are now optional in all VIA metropolitan transit vehicles and facilities. This after a federal judge in Florida threw out the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's order that required masks on all public transportation. The judge's decision allows airlines, airports, and mass transit systems to make their own decisions about mask requirements. It's a good feeling for them to actually uh, lift the mandate. Diedrich Banks says now he doesn't have to worry about forgetting his mask at home before he walks out the door. He says he supports the lift, but will remain cautious. It is a good thing, but it makes you leery as well, too, because people who aren't vaccinated, it kind of puts them in a different pool next to people who are vaccinated. So it kind of gives you a 50-50 feeling about it. You like it, but sometimes you want that a precautionary measure to stay there as well. In VIA's statement, they do want to remind riders that even though masks are not required anymore, the CDC is recommending people to still mask up when they can't socially distance. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a witness may be able to shed some light on a double murder from 2019. That detail mentioned today during opening statements in a capital murder trial for Jonathan Johnson. Both the prosecution and the defense gave opening statements. The state revealed that a surviving witness would take the stand and tell them what happened the night of the shooting and how they were able to identify the mass shooter as Johnson. The motive for the shooting may have all been due to a disagreement between friends over a cell phone plan. So at the end of the day, I'm going to ask you to find him guilty of capital murder because he is. What it's going to come down to is the credibility of, Ange of Angelica or Angelica. It's going to come down to her credibility and it's going to come down to the reliability of her observations. That's what it's going to come down to. So you have to determine in this case whether or not they've proven this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Johnson is accused of shooting and killing 19-year-old Andres Rangel and 18-year-old Katrina Casares. He also faces charges for injuring two other people. If found guilty, he is facing life in prison. The family of Antoine Scott has settled their civil rights lawsuit against the city. That is according to court filings. 36-year-old Scott killed on February 4th back in 2016 after Officer John Lee pulled him over at the Wood Hollow Apartments near Isom and East Ramsey Roads. Police say Lee was called in to assist undercover officers in arresting Scott, who had outstanding warrants. In 2016, San Antonio Police Chief William McManus said Lee feared for his life when he saw something in Scott's hands that he thought was a gun, but it turned out to be a cell phone. Lee was originally handed an indefinite suspension, but McManus changed his mind and ordered Lee to undergo training instead. Scott's family filed a lawsuit against the SAPD, the city of San Antonio, and Lee. That case was settled. However, city council still needs to approve the settlement. And investigators are still trying to find the person responsible for the murder of the man on your screen. Eric Crawford was found dead back in October of 2016 in an apartment on Fairhaven Street. That's off of I-10 near Fredericksburg and Wurzbach. Officers believe he was murdered several days before his body was found. Officers still don't have any suspects in custody. If you have any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. And Crime Stoppers also asking for some tips related to a robbery case that happened at the shops at La Quintera. Those are on the northwest side of town. Police say that back on April 5th, the person pictured here on your screen grabbed items from the Macy's inside the mall and walked out without paying. When the employee tried to stop him, police say the suspect threatened to use a can of pepper spray. Then he got into a white Mercedes SUV and drove away. If you can help with any of these cases, you can call 210-224-STOP. Today, the Bexar County Commissioner's Court holding a meeting, and one of the topics, those recent fires, like the big brush fire at Camp Bullis. The Commissioner's Court set to vote on a burn ban, all in an effort to avoid any more fires like that. 
Last week, Ju Judge Nelson Wolf issued a disaster declaration that banned outdoor birding. That declaration, though, expires today. And happening today, the San Antonio Police Department holding an asset seizure vehicle auction. It's happening at 3625 Roden Road on the west side. Gates are going to open this afternoon at 5, and the auction begins at 6. And the auction includes pickup trucks, SUVs, and a BMW. Keep in mind, you need to register before the start of the sale, and you will need to pay by cash or credit card. We've got all the details for you on KSAT.com. HEB is going to be holding a career fair tomorrow for those who want to apply for warehouse jobs. That fair is going to be between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. on April 20th. Interviews are going to be conducted on site. Those interested in applying can text SELECTOR to 81931 to enter their information online. Interviews will be held at 5600 Business Park, Suite 509. All of this information is on our website, KSAT.com. Pre-K for SA educates 2,000 students every year through its four education centers. And now those students who are as young as four years old are working to help others in our community. Max Massey tells us about the Gracias San Antonio initiative and how you can help out. And I myself have my eye on a few pieces and have put in a few bids and um, it all goes to a good cause. And then we even have people that will bid from across the country. So. Sarah Bray is not only the CEO of Pre-K for SA, but she is also a bidder looking to buy students art all for a good cause. Yeah, so this is our Gracias San Antonio Children Are Citizens project. And it's a year long initiative to help the young children of San Antonio realize that they are important members of our community. The idea is grounded in the belief that children are not just future citizens, but they are active citizens today. And they learn about that nonprofit throughout the year. And, and this year they check, uh, chose the Through Project, which is helping uh, youth as they age out of the foster care system. It's a simple process that can do a lot of good. The children have worked with local artists to create art pieces, which are now on exhibit at our East Center. And we are auctioning those pieces off to the public and the money raised through that online auction will be used to support the through projects. This really is so creative, so multifaceted. You're not only teaching kids about voting, but also teaching them how to be contributors to our community. Yeah, and one of the things that happens throughout the year that really inspires the children for these art pieces is they go on city explorations with their teachers and their families to see all the great things that are going on in San Antonio. They you can bid online or in person. This year's goal, raise $10,000 for the foster children in the Through Project. If people want to see the um, exhibits, the pieces in person, they can visit our East Center either today or tomorrow from three to four where all of the pieces are on exhibit and you can start bidding and the bidding gets intense. It's going to go until April 24th. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. We have a chance for a few showers today. Lots of cloud cover warms up tomorrow, though. We're back in the 80s. Look at that seven day forecast is coming up. The long anticipated major offensive in eastern Ukraine now underway. This according to Russia. Key to their strategy is taking the city of Mariupol, which is reportedly now on the brink of falling. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest developments. Following Ukrainian President Zelensky's announcement that Russia's major offensive in eastern Ukraine is underway, this from Russia's foreign minister. Another stage of this operation is beginning, uh, and I'm sure this will be uh, a very important moment of this entire special operation. Pentagon officials noting there is fierce fighting underway, but saying it's not yet heavier than since Russia launched its war. The Russians are, are doing what we call shaping. They're trying to set the conditions for uh, more aggressive, more overt, and, and larger ground maneuvers uh, in, in the Donbass. In Mariupol, a crucial port city in Ukraine southeast, Russia making a second call for surrender. Ukrainian leaders saying their military
military will fight to the end as their forces take refuge in the Mariupol steel plant. Those troops continuing to fight as Russian forces advance. Bombed and blasted for months, Mariupol's capture would allow Vladimir Putin's troops land access to Crimea to mount future attacks. ABC Stephen Gannier. The Donbass is much more favorable to the kind of warfare that uh, the Russians are used to conducting, this tank warfare or areas where they can uh, have artillery barrages. So uh, it's going to be very, very tough for the Ukrainians to defend. As the fighting escalates and civilian escape becomes even more dangerous, living conditions for those still sheltering in Ukraine is reaching crisis levels. UNICEF now estimating some 6 million Ukrainians are now struggling to find access to drinkable water. I'm Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Went outside a couple of times today. It's, it's like sticky. It, but it's chilly. Yeah. It's a chilly sticky. It's a chilly. <laughs> Yeah. Is there such work. a thing? Follow that up, Justin. Well, yeah, you know what? Those are bad adjectives. That, that's about <laughs> right. It, it is cool out there. We've had humidity also surging in. Today is sort of our one cool day in the seven-day forecast because after today it gets fairly warm. Clouds are helping us out, keeping those temperatures down. The aquifer is down seven tenths of a foot to 646.4 and dropping. And your pollen count, oak, makes a comeback today. It's 12,430 back into the very high category. Molds, pine, grass, pecan, all there. Just looking at the radar, we've got a storm in Valverde County that's just gone severe. We're going to show you that when we come back. We're coming up with some new weather terms. Sticky chili. Sticky chili. That's a, you know. I've been doing this a long time, never heard that before. Kind of works, <laughs> kind of works. Uh, it's definitely going to be warm and sticky coming up. We're going to get more humidity, more heat headed our way. In the meantime, we're watching a storm now in Valverde County. It has gone severe. Now, look, this is open over open country out there, but the, there is likely some hail with this storm. It is not headed towards Del Rio or anything like that, and, and this is uh, quite a distance from San Antonio, and I think most of these storms probably stay out west today. But let's look a little bit closer at this storm. It's right around the Pandel area, moving a little bit closer to uh, Juno, and you can kind of see where the core of that storm is, where you see some of those pink colors. That's where the heftiest rain is, and likely getting some hail out of this, uh, probably some quarter size hail. We can go ahead and track this storm as it moves off to the uh, south and east, and I'm guessing. We're not going to have anything in the, in the path of the storm because there's just not much out there. Uh, but some ranch land and hopefully, you know, look, we need some rain in Valverde County. That's for sure. Hopefully some of that will feed down into the rivers and creeks there. We'll keep you posted on where it heads, but it's certainly, again, not going to impact San Antonio. And we need the rain here for the month. We are at 0.2 inches, two tenths of an inch. And we basically got that in one day on the 10th, April 10th. Uh, beyond that, uh, it does look like there is a little bit of hope next week. I'm circling this day right there because I think by Monday of next week, there is a little better chance for rain. And since October 28th, we've only had 4.75 inches. That's at San Antonio International, keep in mind. As we look at the satellite picture, a lot of cloud cover starting to feed in here. There are those storms out west that have developed where there's a little more sun out there. And we're noticing some showers starting to take shape there just south of Beeville. I think the opportunity is there for some light showers this afternoon. Don't expect much, though. This is not going to be uh, a big rainmaker, this energy that we have working through uh, South Texas today. And as you look at the forecast, it does show some of these light showers. We're going to keep in a 20% chance through this evening into tonight and then maybe early tomorrow morning before that all moves away. And then clouds basically clear out by, say, 5 p.m., three, four, five o'clock tomorrow. And with more sun, you'll see some warmer temperatures. We did start off with sun this morning. It was clear earlier this morning, allowed temperatures to fall, but now the clouds have moved in and temperatures have been pretty steady. 68 degrees right now at the airport, 66 Kerrville, 68 New Braunfels, 69 Hondo, 72 right now in Pleasanton. And a little closer look here, 65 Comfort, 63 Bernie stage. We're not gonna get a big warm up today because these clouds are just not gonna let the sun through. So. Mid 70s at best, I think, for highs this afternoon. Dew point trend, you guys mentioned it feeling a little more sticky. Yeah, these dew points are on the rise. And by this evening, we'll see the dew points back in the 60s, which puts us firmly 
in the muggy territory and those dew points don't leave that muggy territory and till next week. So it is going to be a humid stretch here. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast. 20% chance of rain at three o'clock. We'll still call it cloudy 74 76 again if we're lucky. 20% chance of rain through 7 p.m. We'll bring those rain chances down a little bit overnight tonight. Temperatures again holding steady in the 70s there. As we look at the water vapor, kind of a messy scenario out west, but nothing that's going to produce all that much rain and, and our pattern is going to be uh, pretty steady going forward. Now what I'm watching is this system and I mean it's way out there uh, out near Alaska. This could be our next rainmaker. At least that's the hope. It's going to move its way towards the United States and eventually down towards Texas. Some of the energy anyway and help to push a front into the area. Now there's still questions on timing, but sometime during the day on Monday and that should be enough to get a decent chance of showers and storms going. That's what we're hoping for. In the meantime, just a small chance for shower tomorrow morning. 85 though by tomorrow afternoon. So that's the big difference in temperature. 88 degrees on Thursday, 89 Friday, mostly cloudy. Notice it stays windy through the weekend and we'll get temperatures back in the 90s on Saturday and Sunday. Monday, 40% chance of rain. That's the best chance we've had in a while. And we'll see uh, that how much rain we get out of it. Can't guarantee we'll get a lot, but at least it's something, guys. Thank you, Justin. Something's better than nothing. Oh, I guess. I'm tired of that wind. I'm running out of rocks to put in my back. <laughs> hey, the Spurs, find out what draft picks they have. At least a couple of them coming up. The NBA held coin flips to decide tiebreakers between the Celtics, the Sixers, and the Bucks since they all finished 51 and 31 this season, and the results directly affect the Spurs. Remember, the Celtics gave up their first round pick in 2022 in that trade for Derek White on the day of the trade deadline. The NBA announcing the Spurs' first round pick via Boston will now take place at number 25 after the Celtics lost the coin flip. Thanks. Their pick could have been as high as 23. The Spurs still have two more picks in the first round thanks to Toronto who dealt their first round pick in 2022 to the Spurs and Drew Eubanks that is young trade and that'll now be at number 20 and after losing the play in tournament now the Spurs could wind up with a top 10 pick during the NBA lottery as part of the same release the NBA announced that three teams Houston Detroit and Orlando have the best chance at winning the NBA lottery at 14 percent the Spurs at four and a half percent. Game two of the Western Conference first round series between the Jazz and Mavericks in Dallas last night. Luka Doncic still out with a calf injury. Fourth quarter, Jazz in control. Donovan Mitchell gets his own rebound, puts it up and in, plus foul. Utah up six. Mitchell scored 34. Dallas rallies behind the play of Jalen Brunson. He drives, stops, and floats it in. That's a 10-0 run there on. Brunson finished with a game high 41. Mavericks win it. 110-104 and even the series at a win apiece. Hey, for the first time in the history of San Antonio FC, the United Soccer League team is going to host Austin FC of Major League Soccer. This is part of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup in competition in the third round. It'll be held on Wednesday tomorrow at Toyota Field. The first ever meeting of the intrastate rivals comes after San Antonio FC defeated the Defeaters Kicks SC 3-1 last Tuesday to advance to the third round. And what adds up to a rivalry belief that Austin got the MLS invite that San Antonio was promised? We know it's a, it's a big challenge. It's a, a strong MLS team that are doing fantastic this year as well. Um, so it's a massive challenge. We look forward to the challenge and we're going to put our best foot forward in front of the best fans in the league. Obviously, San Antonio fans wanted the MLS bid. Austin got it. Um, and ever since then, there's been a little bit of a little bit of strife, a little bit of beef, which we always love in the soccer community. Um, I think the fans are going to be completely up for it. Uh, we're, we're proud of who we are. We're proud of what we're building here in San Antonio, and it's a good time to show our academy kids all the soccer that has kind of come through San Antonio that we mean business and uh, we're a high-level team. And with the players we have, we should be competing at this level. Yeah, good time to stick it to Austin. Kickoff tomorrow night, Toyota Field be at 8 o'clock. It is always a good time to talk football, and this morning we had a major announcement about an upcoming event to kick off the football season. The KSAT Pigskin Classic is set for August 27th. The Alamo Dome, R.J. Marquez, has been there since that announcement was made this morning. Actually, it was there early for the pre-announcement announcement. R.J.? 
Yeah, David, so you were out here earlier with me this morning as we were doing some live shots for 9 a.m. and you could just tell the buzz and the energy and the excitement around this triple hitter header event here at the Alamo Dome. So as you just mentioned, August 27th. So that is the date that people need to mark on their calendars here as we get set for the first ever KSAT Pigskin Classic. And it was definitely a who's who of coaches and athletic directors out here earlier this morning at the Alamo Dome. We also had the cheerleaders and all the other officials that are be, be, be a big part of this event. KSAT's Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez also out here, including our general manager, Phil Lane. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this is going to be a full day of fun and action here at the Dome starting at 11 a.m. So we're going to have a pregame show to start things off and then kick off for the first game will be between Smithson Valley taking on the Reagan Rattlers. And then the middle game is going to be a big one here. Judson taking on Johnson. And then we have the final, the nightcap. It's going to be Steele taking on Brennan, who in my prediction is going to be the number one team in the city headed into next season. So want to go back real quick to that Judson versus Johnson matchup. Interesting storyline here. The new Johnson head coach, T.P. Miller, will be taking on his old head coach at Johnson, Mark Soto. Here's what Coach Miller had to say about that matchup and this event. Grateful for the opportunity and, and being in this position to make an impact on students' lives and um, excited for the event. Uh, I know I may sound repetitive in all the interviews, but it really is about the community and about the student athletes. Um, and it puts a cherry on top being able to go against uh, one of my mentors uh, with Coach Soto. And, and it's just a really big event for uh, Johnson in the community. And that should be a great, great game. Again, just one of three here. And a reminder that you can see all of these games on KSAT 12. Yes, we're going to have this on air. And, of course, you can also catch it on KSAT.com and KSAT Plus, plus also the KSAT BGC app. So several different platforms for you guys to check that out. And get this, guys. There will also be opportunities for KSAT insiders. We're going to have a barbecue cook-off that day with, K with David Elder. Of course, no one better than David Alder, right, guys? So it's going to be a lot of fun here at the Dome as we get set for the first ever KSAT Pigskin Classic. David and Ursula, back to you guys. All right, RJ, thank you very much. See you next half hour. This is, this is huge. Huge. Huge, yeah. Nothing ever been done like this in San Antonio before. So we're looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. Yes. The weather has been perfect for spending time out of doors for you and your family and all the bugs coming up today at 5, 12 on your slides. Marilyn Moritz explains which insect repellents are best for enjoying your time out of doors. Bug free. It's today at 5 after entertainment tonight. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention launching a new effort. The agency says it's going to create a new center that's going to func function like the National Weather Service for infectious diseases, though. It is designed to help guide decision making regarding developing vaccines, deploying antivirals and helping individuals decide whether it's safe for them to go to, say, the movie theater. Plans to launch the new center start in August. The CDC receiving $200 million in initial funding for the 2021 COVID-19 stimulus package, as well as the American Rescue Plan. For the first time in more than a year, masks no longer required on planes after a federal judge in Florida struck down the national mandate. Even Uber riders and drivers can leave their masks at home. The ride service company announced that facial coverings are no longer mandatory in their vehicles. Uber officials emailed users saying they revised their policy after the masking order from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention expired. Looking outside with live cam. Yeah, this isn't a mistake. We're in the 60s. Cloudy, cool, 60s, a little bit of a breeze. Feels great out there. We had a great start to the day. Temperatures in the 50s. We had clear skies earlier. Now it is cloudy. It stays cloudy most of the day. We're also watching that one storm out there in Valverde County. It is packing a punch, likely some quarter sized hail with this storm as it works to the south and east. Of course, the big question is, does it make it all the way to San Antonio? Likely no. In fact, uh, chances are it does not, but it is going to affect areas there in northeastern Valverde County near Juno, seeing some pretty heavy rain. Most of this is open ranch country, but uh, hopefully dropping some much needed rain there again as it moves off to the south and east. 
Uh, let's look at the satellite picture here and you can see all the cloud cover and most everybody in our viewing area now is underneath overcast skies. That really is going to help us with temperatures today. It's not going to warm up much at all. Uh, right now we're sitting in the upper 60s here around Bear County. 68 degrees at the airport, 63 burning stage, 64 right now in Bandera and Cloudy. Close to 70 in Hondo. We'll see those numbers jump up a little bit, but not much. We're shooting for mid 70s here in town. 70s most places and then some upper 60s there in the hill country uh, and again our extended forecast uh, does include some rain chances down the line we'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit guys in afghanistan at least six people are dead dozens more injured following attacks on two schools in western kabul today those explosions happening in a neighborhood that is home to a large community of shia muslims Emergency, which is a group that offers free medical and surgical treatment for civilians, says seven injured children were taken to the hospital. That specific region has been targeted in the past by the terror group, the Islamic State. However, there has been no official claim of responsibility in today's attack. In May of 2021, there was a bombing at a girls' school in the area. It killed at least 85 people. Most of the victims were teenaged girls. Right now, Philippine rescue crews are searching for more than 100 people still missing in landslides that were set off by a typhoon more than a week ago. Since then, intermittent rain has hampered the efforts of the rescue teams, and they could face another landslide because the ground in that area is still unstable. The death toll from the landslides and flooding now at 172. The government says the families who lost their homes will be given housing, but it may take several months to find land and to build those new homes. Now to the catastrophic flooding that has killed more than 400 people in South Africa. Tens of thousands of people are left homeless. ABC's Maggie Rooley has more details. Overnight, the desperate search for survivors after catastrophic flooding in South Africa leaves hundreds dead, dozens more missing. The heaviest rains in more than 60 years pummeling the KwaZulu-Natal province, devastating Durban, the country's third largest city, and leaving at least 443 dead. We tried to run away, my, my, my young children, my young uh, boy. The historic rains washing out roads, obliterating bridges, tossing vehicles into homes. Tens of thousands now homeless. I don't even have a bed. Rescuers wading through waste deep flood waters with search dogs, at times even swimming, looking for the more than 48 people still unaccounted for. And with vital infrastructure wiped out, safe drinking water is a major concern. The South African Army launching Operation Chariot, sending 10,000 troops into the disaster zone to help. And this is the first day this region hasn't had rain in nearly two weeks, and we're finally able to see just the devastation this storm left behind. Miles and miles of debris that was churned up along this beach. The president here in South Africa has declared a state of disaster, going one step further, even saying climate change have played a role in this storm storm saying the country needs to prepare because this this shows that climate change is here. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Durban, South Africa. An Iowa man celebrating a million dollar mistake. How the matchup made him a rich man. And a small dog honored with a big record. He's now the world's oldest dog. So just how many years young is a little guy? Details after the break. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. A Florida federal judge struck down the federal mask travel mandate just three weeks after the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had extended it till May 3rd. The judge ruled that the CDC exceeded its legal authority under the Public Health Services Act of 1944. Vice President Kamala Harris announcing that the U.S. will no longer conduct destructive satellite tests, calling on other nations to come together to create guidelines for responsible behavior in space. This call comes at a time where Earth's orbit has become increasingly filled with space debris. And a judge ruling that Amazon must reinstate a worker who was fired for protesting against the company's working conditions early in the pandemic at its Staten Island facility. The judge sided with the National Labor Relations Board that the employee was fired unlawfully. Amazon says it will appeal the ruling. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Hannah Ostopchuk in New York.
The Great Texas Air Show is set to feature some pretty impressive sights, including the Budweiser Clydesdales. The iconic horses are already in town. This morning they were being washed and groomed and had their harnesses polished up in preparation for their busy weekend. These guys travel some 100,000 miles a year. They will participate in the Great Texas Air Show at JBSA Randolph on April 23rd through the 24th. A dog has just been named the oldest living dog. So how old is old? Here's ABC's Will Gans with more on that. I want to talk about me. Talk Let's about talk about Toby Keith. One on my, me, my. Not that one. <laughs> this one. I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. I am. You are. Toby Keith, the Chihuahua, is an official Guinness World Record holder for oldest living dog. As of today, the seven pound pooch is 21 years and 99 days old. I think it's love. I think it's genetics. But truly, he's been on the same diet his whole life. No bacon for breakfast. Toby Keith prefers something else. First thing in the morning when we wake up at 630, I give him a slice of turkey. That's his favorite treat. He's not big on sweets either, and he stays active. Without exaggerating, up and down the stairs 30 to 40 times a day, like nothing. Toby Keith was born January 9th, 2001, the last pup of the litter left in the cardboard box when Gisela Shore found him. The minute I took him out of that box, the love, it was a done deal. Gisela, a country music fan, named him after one of her favorite singers who happened to be touring near her Florida home at the time. When you name a dog Toby Keith, you're expecting a certain something. Has he lived up to his name? He has. He, as tiny as he is, he, ha he thinks he's a Rottweiler. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? Does he know any tricks? Stay, it's bedtime, and do you want to go outside? Those he things he knows. While Toby Keith is the oldest living dog, the record for oldest dog ever belongs to an Australian cattle dog named Bluey, who lived to be 29 years, five months old. But at the rate Toby Keith is going, he'll get there in no time. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Poor Toby Keith doesn't get any bacon. My dog gets bacon. An Iowa man now very rich. He just won a million bucks with an accidental ticket. Josh Buster of West Burlington bought five easy ticket plays for last Friday's Mega Millions lottery. However, the cashier accidentally only printed one play from the terminal, then offered to print four additional plays on a different ticket. Buster said that move probably changed the numbers he would have originally received, resulting in this big win. The 40-year-old chef says he'll likely pay off some bills and put a bunch away for retirement. Mm. That's, just, that's a positive mistake. That's good. I mean, like that. that's just pure luck right there. You, you would never know if the opposite happened, right? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Someone's looking out. Uh, we'll go outside for you live, and we've got a lot of cloud cover, not a lot of rain, at least here around San Antonio. We're hoping for a few showers this afternoon. 68 degrees. The high temperature so far today, 57. The lows, not a big difference between the low and high, thanks to our cloud cover. It could be as hot as 101. That was set back in 1996, so we're thankful for this cooler weather. But will we get rain? That is the bigger question. We'll take a look coming up. The first ever KSAT Pigskin Classic is coming this August at the Alamo Dome. We made that announcement earlier this morning. RJ Marquez back live with us from the Alamo Dome. We keep saying this is big, huge, ginormous. In part because it's going to benefit the community, right? <laughs> right. Yes, that's a big part of this as well, guys. You know, sort of, that, we talked about all the buzz this morning surrounding such great matchups here. Just want to go over that list again. Smithson Valley versus Reagan, Johnson versus Judson, and Brennan versus Steele. So obviously those are all big time schools here in the San Antonio area, but this is going to be a big time event for the community as well. And again, earlier today, we made this big announcement. We had coaches here, athletic directors, cheerleaders on hand to take part in us announcing the first ever case at 
Pigskin Classic. So again, kickoff for that first game will be at 11.30 in the morning, but also in attendance this morning, representatives from Gridiron Heroes, they are actually going to receive a donation from the day, and that was just announced earlier this morning as well. So Gridiron Heroes helps children with spinal injuries. Eric Canales with Gridiron Heroes talked to us about his excitement for the day and that donation coming their way. In reality, this is actually a dream come true for, for me, in a sense, for, for Gridiron Heroes, in the sense that uh, I've always wanted to do a, a game like this. Looking forward to you know an annual game that will benefit Gridiron Heroes, in a sense, and that uh, we can be able to make some, some big changes for some of our families, you know, to be able to help them long term. Yeah, so a lot of great things happening this morning at the Dome. And again, that, gate, that day will be August 27th, so go ahead, go ahead and mark your calendars. And again, you could see all those games on KSAT 12. We're going to be live on air for the entire triple header. It's going to be like 11 hours of action throughout the day, including pregame and postgame shows. You could also watch at KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and the BGC app. And of course, guys, we worked with Texas Sports Production to get all these powerhouse teams here at the Dome on one day. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of events on the field, but also outside as well, a barbecue cook-off. And again, $48,000 also going to be donated back to these schools and students and along with that donation to Gridiron Hero. So just a lot of excitement about this day, August 27th. Make sure to keep that on hand. I can only imagine how excited the players are going to be to have a game in August in the air conditioning. It went to 72 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be sweet. It's going to be just a fantastic day all the way around. Starts at like 10 o'clock and goes till the last game is and, over. And the fans too. But, yeah. I mean, how, it's what a, nice. what a. Well, and these kids don't always get an opportunity to play in the Alamo Dome, you know, so it's, it's great for them and all the fans to be oh, in there man. watching. I can remember in the marching band even when you get yep. in that dome. Oh my goodness. It's great Fun. stuff. So, so we won't have to worry about the weather that day. No, you nice. just walk into the to the dome, I guess, from your car, but that's how that. That's Walking it. to the AC, maybe you do a little tailgating beforehand. Ah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, it'll be nice inside. Great, great event. We're excited about it. Okay, so we've been watching that storm up there in Valverde County. The severe thunderstorm warning went until 1245 and it's been allowed to expire. The storm weakening just a little bit, but we'll zoom in closer. There's still some lightning. This is still a, a nice looking storm, just not severe and uh, continues to work its way south and east towards the Devil's River State Natural Area. We'll pause it here and I'll put on some of the, uh, let's see, the, the threats and we'll see what we're exactly what we're dealing with and we can uh, query this. And where you see some of those purple colors, still some one inch hail. So this could be up to quarter size hail, although we have not had any reports of that here in Valverde County, but also this is over open land. So there, there may not be many reports coming out. But uh, half inch to one inch size hail still with this storm as it tracks off to the south and east. And it may, may, if it holds together, eventually work its way towards, say, Edwards County or maybe uh, eventually down towards the Brackenville area. But it would have to hold together for a long time. We have plenty of time to watch it. And that's really all we have out there at this hour. As we zoom out, it's mostly, uh, mostly just that storm and some activity there around Del Rio that we're uh, dealing with. And I think if we're going to see anything here around San Antonio, it's mostly going to be in the form of some light showers. And you see a little bit of shower activity around Del Rio, a place that uh, certainly needs the rain. Here around San Antonio, I'm going to switch radar sites, and uh, you'll see that there's uh, just not a lot there. We're uh, seeing pretty quiet conditions here around San Antonio. As the afternoon wears on, we may see a couple more showers pop up, and the models have been hinting at that. Here is a look at those computer models. and. This is probably overdoing it just a little bit, just based on what we're seeing now. We're going to keep in a 20% chance of showers, but don't expect it to be one of those situations where it waters your lawn and everything is good because I just don't think this is going to be much for us. And as we go into tonight, a few leftover showers, and then by tomorrow morning, all this is moving out. Clouds eventually clear out, and we get some warmer temperatures coming up tomorrow. It's going to feel more like a summer-like pattern starting tomorrow through the weekend. Not right now, though. Cloudy skies in 68. Feels good outside. East southeasterly winds at 13, and that is a change. East northeasterly winds switch to those more southeasterly winds, and that means the dew point is on its way up. We're going to see more humidity, um, especially by this evening. Wind gusts have been picking up some, too. We're seeing some gusts around 21 miles per hour in Castroville, gusting to 14 in Bolverde. Winds will be kind of off and on today. But you see all the cloud cover, and there's a lot of it. Most everybody is underneath these overcast skies. 65 Boulevardy, 68 New Braunfels, 67 right now in Seguin. Dew points are in the 50s. 
But as we go forward in time, and you see by four or five o'clock, these dew points are jumping into the mid 60s. So that's where we get into the muggy situation. And I'd like to tell you those dew points come back down again. They really don't all the way through Sunday. It's going to be sticky. So our forecast, our KSAT 12 hour forecast here, 20% chance of rain through the evening. So you may want to grab an umbrella just in case you probably won't need it. 74, 7 p.m., uh, 73, 10 o'clock, 72, 11 p.m. And by midnight, we're still looking at cloudy skies. Here's the big picture very quickly. And you'll notice there is uh, a storm system exiting the northeast. Still some snow there. And honestly, it's been pretty cold for much of the country. It's 36 in Cleveland, 40 in Minneapolis, 58 in Memphis. The only warm spot are, spots are your typical warm spots. Miami, uh, El Paso, Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix only up around 82. It could be hotter this time of year. So the extended forecast. We're going to go 85 tomorrow. Just a small, small chance of rain in the morning. Small, small chance Thursday, mainly out west. Otherwise, it's windy. Morning clouds, afternoon sun, and then Monday. Monday is the day I'm circling. We're expecting a frontal boundary that may kick up some showers and storms and it would cool us down some as we get closer. We'll be able to to hone in on that forecast just a little bit better. Yeah. You know, we missed that hot dog yesterday. Yeah, yeah, not good for you. Well, are we something. eating healthy today? Now we're getting spicy. <laughs> yes. Yes. This kind of spicy though. Yes, we are spicing, spicing things up. And Chef Jared Campbell from Lost Buddy Spices is here. And if I've got, say, two pantry shelves full of spices, that's too many, right? Yeah, it's time to clean out your spice cabinet and put the two spices you'll ever need. And the recipe is about four generations old, right? Yeah, this, uh, oh. the original rub is about four generations old. And the uh, garden salts, you know, 10, 20 years old. Okay, we're getting spicy, we're getting fashionable as well. <laughs> yes, okay, we get a preview of Fashion Able, an event hosted by Spina Bifida Texas, and of course, making fashion, uh, you know, perfect for any disability. Yes, indeed, and then a little bit of food. My, oh my, it is an Asian fusion food truck, and it's that nice little bowl right there that Ted is grabbing at. And don't forget, Mother's Day is coming up in a couple of weeks. Wouldn't it be nice if you could write a note like this? Tell you what, Sabrina's going to tell us exactly how to do that. Independent calligraphy look good. All right, welcome back. It's the storm that uh, just doesn't want to quit. Still working its way across Valverde County. It's still moving east. It's not severe, but uh, was earlier. It's dumping some decent rain over the rural areas there in Valverde County. We'll see where it moves next couple next couple of hours. There's also the potential for a few showers here in San Antonio today, but the rain chance is here just 20%. Windy next few days, cloudy mornings, warm afternoons, close to 90 by the time we get in Thursday, Friday, and the weekend, guys. Thank you, Justin. I hope that rain comes here. Be nice. Mm -hmm. You've got some good looking handwriting, don't you? Um, my daughter good? actually does that calligraphy, oh. calligraphy stuff. Wow, so some of us need to learn how to write decent. My wife's the only one can read mine. Essay Live, it starts right now. Today on Essay Live, it's a historic hotel brought back to life. We show you how it's celebrating everything great about San Antonio. Plus, whether you are writing a beautiful Mother's Day card or congratulating a graduate, calligraphy is a great way to elevate your message. We share how you can take lessons. And it's Asian fusion inspired cuisine from a local food truck. We sling noodles with the owner and find out what else they're putting on the menu. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. <laughs> You've got an audience today. We yes, love it. Yes, we have the best audience today. Hello and happy Tuesday. I'm Fiona Gorski. And you're going to see a lot of those folks a little bit later on in a very special segment. And I'm Mike Osterhage. It is wonderful outside today and it's wonderful inside today because... Oh. Yeah. Yes, we are spicing things up. Yes, the show is getting spicy today. You don't get products this good out of nowhere. Lost Buddy Spices has been passed down, not two, not three, but four generations. And Chef Jared Campbell is here to show us how these spices can be used. And I love what you said about mm -hmm. if you've got the spice cabinet, everybody yeah. does, yes. you dig through, you can't find yes. anything. Right. Clean it out, right? This will fix it all, okay. right? You just throw all that away, spring clean your, your cabinets and put these two things in there and you'll be fine. Just these two things, all right. Tell, tell us what one of them yeah, is. Yeah, so uh, over here we've got the garden salt. 
-hmm. So this is the newest product. It's uh, fresh herbs from Texas and uh, salt, a little uh, special spices, and some white pepper in it. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to put it on the uh, baguette there. So I'll slice some baguette, and then I'll put a little butter on it, toss a little salt on it, put it in the oven for a little bit, and toast it. Ooh. It goes really well. These spices work well together. So the, uh, the Lost Buddy Rub here, mm -hmm. I usually make a tomato mozzarella salad. It's everybody's favorite. Uh, so I do a little tomato, some mozzarella, some basil, uh, a little bit of olive oil, okay. a, a little squeeze of lemon, and some Lost Buddy Rub, and it all mm. together. And then we'll put it in the bowl here and we'll try it together. Okay. And you said where you, the spices that are in here, the herbs that are in here, are the herbs that you would naturally have and they dry yes. out. So um, I came up with it. Uh, I was growing herbs in Colorado where I was living, and mm -hmm. in the winter all the herbs would die. So we just chop them up, mix them in with salt, and we keep them on the line in the kitchen, and that's what we use to, to spice everything. We'd add salt. And I mean, this is a, a great little thing. If you wanted to use this just for some hors d'oeuvres, they have yeah, some little bread. Yeah, it's super easy to do. Tons. You could do it at home tonight if you wanted. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes no time at all. And uh, it, it's a great little appetizer for everybody. And I mean, for these to basically replace a lot mm. of the spices you have in your pantry, I mean, these are great gift items too, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mother's Day, Father's Day is coming up. Uh, the little small ones make perfect little stocking stuffers in the in the winter for Christmas. And, and if you wanted to, you know, if you had one of those spice racks or something like that, that would fit in it absolutely perfectly. Yeah, so, easily. Oh, you want those now? There you go. Okay, these. Right. Yeah. And you said this can go on literally anything. Anything. So, like the the garden salt, I put on fresh veggies. Mm -hmm. uh, asparagus is in season right now, so I just roast some asparagus, throw some salt on it, and you're good to go. The the oh, lost buddy you. rub, I put it on lamb. Last week, it was amazing. Put it on burgers, put it on steak, chicken. If you look at the logo, it's got all the fruits and animals and, and vegetables you can just put it on. And you can even do it on fruits too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that salt's great on watermelon. Ooh. It's great on apples, mm -hmm. I mean, you name it. Now, you've been invited to compete in the World Food Championships, right? Yeah, I competed a couple years ago uh, in the World Food Championships. Uh, I placed, uh, I didn't make it to the very end, but uh, I, I made it high enough that I was pretty proud of it. And what was the recipe? So we did an upside down uh, cornbread, bacon cornbread. Oh, okay. heavens. Yeah, the next time amazing. you're here. Next time yeah, he's here. We'll come back it. and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the other thing good about this, too, because a lot of times if people, you know, a lot of folks like salt, but they say you cut back on the salt, sure. eat more, uh, you know, herbs and spices like that. Absolutely. Which this would kind of help you do because yeah. it's got more. Uh, it's got more flavor. More flavor right. to it and a lot of different, you know, I hate to use the, the undernotes and the undertones yeah, to it with the different flavors. So yeah. this is a great little tip. Now, where can folks buy it? So you can find them in some boutiques around Bernie. Uh, we're getting some uh, meat markets kind of around the state. And then you can buy it online at lostbuddyspices.com. All right, working for folks. What so, would be next, by the way, if you were to come up with anything? So we're working on a couple different things. Uh, you know, we're talking about maybe a low sodium uh, version. Uh, we've got some secret things in the works, but we're not going to make it until it's the only other spice you'll ever need. Okay. <laughs> the, only, the only one more, and that's it. <laughs> You know, you gotta fill up that that cup. Don't you clean it out and put these get two things so in we here, get some so. more in there. Yeah. Yes. Oh, All right. Delicious. Room for baguettes in your pantry. Yes. For more information on Lost Buddy Spices, just head to our website salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we provided a link, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. A lot of movies are mm -hmm. starting to come out now. We've had, you know, there's been the ones online and all that, but at the theaters too. And so we have a, a question for yeah. the day. Because, you know, the summer blockbusters are coming out. So yeah. if you, you know, could be the main character in any new movie this year, what film would you pick? Do you have one? Yes. Do you have just one? Yes. Not more than one movie? Yes. A new one? Yes. Not an old one? Not. Maverick. Oh, Top Gun. Yeah. Yeah, I could totally see you. Because yeah. I want to ride an, an F 18. Game. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I but an F-16, not an F-18. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would love that. Yes, totally. What about you? Um, well, you have the sunglasses for it, too, that you wear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jurassic Park, the new Jurassic Park. Really? Heck yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let us question. know at SA Life Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your answer a little later in the show. All right, looking for a new place for your date night? Well, this cute boutique hotel has something special that locals can enjoy. Yes, I took a trip over to the, the Estancia del Norte Hotel for a special look at what they offer, and the great thing about this hotel is they really do celebrate all things great about San Antonio. 
Well, it's a hotel with a rich history in Mexican culture, Spanish style, and Texas charm. We are here in the heart of the city at the Estancia del Norte by Hilton. And joining me right now is director of outlets, Sammy Norris, to tell you all about it. Hello, hello, thanks for having us here. <laughs> yes, ma'am, thank y'all for coming. Uh, we are a one of a kind of hotel. We're at Estancia del Norte, where San Antonio does celebrate. Um, we are reaching our one year anniversary. April 21st is our one year anniversary, but this building has been here for over 40 years. We just went through a major renovation to bring more life and breathe life back into San Antonio. All right, so this historic hotel living again, of course, and you've got a bar here, you've got a restaurant here too, right? Yes, ma'am, at Paseo Bar, we have our Texas craft cocktails as well as Texas craft beers as well. Okay, and we are going to be showing off a few of the signature yes, cocktails, and which one are we going to make? We're gonna make our classic margarita today. So right here we have our fresh squeezed lime juice. We're gonna pour that on in there. Okay. All right, we're gonna grab our agave. We're gonna put that measurement right in there. Okay. Let's pour that in there. We're gonna flip it over one more time and add our Grand Marier. All right. And fill this, Yes, right? ma'am, and pour that on in there. Okay. Then we're gonna grab our good old tequila, Lalo. Fill that bad boy right you on up. You don't have to tell me. I gotta, <laughs> oh, it may have been a little over. That's all right, a little bit of love, a <laughs> little bit of love. Look at that. That looks incredibly refreshing. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> all right, that's the margarita. All right, so fiesta may be over, but you guys are still celebrating and folks can join in too, right? That is correct, yes ma'am. So right here what you have is our 1891 cocktail and it's supporting our Battle of the Flowers Association. So you can come get that drink for $12. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, just like San Antonio. The drink that we have right next to it is our Flambeau Meat Cocktail. It comes with our award-winning medal and it's a, your choice of any kind of drink that you want. We put our illuminated ice cubes in there and then you get one of our medals with it. So besides the fabulous drinks here, it is the fabulous food. And Sammy, I had no idea you were treating me to lunch. This <laughs> yes, looks amazing. I know how to take care of my guests. <laughs> All right. So what we have here right now is our black snapper, which is, comes with a corn mashu. This is one of our Chef Sarah's favorite dishes. She used to make this corn mashu with her dad. Is that popcorn? That is popcorn with it, yes ma'am, it is. We do put popcorn on dish just to give it a little bit of extra color and flair to it. Now both these dishes are some of the crowd favorites, right? And this is a behemoth. That right there <laughs> is our apple sage pork chop. That is delicious, bone-in pork chop, comes with apple sage. Now Chef Sarah, when she was a little girl, she used to pick washing apples with her mother in Seattle, so this is why she chose to do this dish. It is a delicious dish. I know you're ready to eat, so am I. <laughs> Now the Estancia del Norte Hotel by Hilton it really celebrates the community, right? Yes, ma'am. We have Regalo Boutique Shop, which supports the local craftsmen and local artisans. You can so, find some really unique gifts. Yes, ma'am, you definitely can. And um, the Estancia Cares Program. Now, that is one of my favorite things. So what we do is support 12 nonprofit organizations throughout the year where they come, they select one of our cocktails, and we give them give back 50% right back to that organization. So folks want to stay, they want to play, they want to drink, they want to eat, tell them where you're located. Yes, ma'am, we're right here on the corner right next to North Star Mall. For more information on the Estancia del Norte Hotel by Hilton, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. My, oh my, I'm ready for some delicious Asian fusion food from a local food truck that's going beyond noodles. Plus, fashion designed for everyone. We get a preview of an event that's making and celebrating attire for everyone. Stay with us.